Most guitar players that I've seen who've been playing for a couple years are doing one thing in particular that's probably holding them back more than anything else. They're holding the pick wrong, and you actually might be too. And so if you're tired of missing strings, having the pick move around in between your fingers, or you just want more control and accuracy, you have to start holding the pick in a way that basically makes those problems disappear. Now, it's a super common mistake, so don't worry. Everyone makes this mistake at the beginning. I did too, and virtually every one of my students that I've ever seen has done the same thing, so you're not alone. It might not even seem like that big of a deal. I mean, it's just how you hold the pick. You just grab it and start playing, right? Well, it is kind of a big deal because the pick is the only thing between your fingers and the string. So it's essentially your contact point between you and the guitar itself. And depending on how you're holding it, it can really affect pretty much every single part of your picking. Everything from how fast and accurately you play to whether or not you're dropping the pick in the middle of a song is determined by how you actually hold the pick. You know, when I was first starting out and trying to become a professional player, I saw all these guys who were better and older and more experienced than me, and they never missed. They always had this flawless picking ability. And so I really had to examine how I was holding the pick and if there was any way I can improve it to increase my playing ability. And if you look at all the best players in the world, they all do something in common. They all hold the pick in a way that gives them maximum control and accuracy when playing. So today I'm gonna to show you three simple guidelines that'll help take your picking from beginner to advanced. And at the end, I'll give you a bonus tip, how to choose the best type of pick for your playing style. And so I wanna share some of the secrets that I had to stumble upon the hard way to save you some time and kind of show you my tricks of the trade and how I hold the pick. So tip number one is stay natural. One of the biggest problems I see with guitarists who are starting out is they hold their thumb wrong. Imagine you're in your house and you're about to go for a walk. You got two pairs of shoes sitting by the front door. One is just your normal pair of shoes and the other one looks the exact same, but they weigh a hundred pounds. Which one are you gonna put on? The, the normal ones, right? Because if you put on the ones that weigh a hundred pounds, it's gonna be like a huge amount of effort just to take one step. And so, you know, picking is the same thing. If you have to use a ton of energy for every single stroke, you're gonna start missing a lot. You're gonna have really bad accuracy and really bad control and you're gonna slow down as you play. And this all comes down to how you hold the pick and more specifically, how your thumb contacts the pick. I see tons of players grab their pick and hold it like this. They bend their thumb. See, when you bend your thumb, the muscles in your hand and forearm have to contract. And those are the exact muscles you need when playing. So if those muscles are already contracted and tight, and then you're gonna to try to play loose and relaxed, you're gonna kind of have a problem, aren't you? The trick to staying relaxed and not tightening as you play faster or more difficult music is by keeping your thumb relaxed on the pick. I want you to hold up your hand and just go completely loose and relaxed. Now take a look at the shape of your thumb. Look at my thumb, right? It's definitely not bent. It's sitting there and it's got kind of like a natural curve to it. There's a tiny little natural bend in the knuckle, but I'm not flexing. I'm not purposely bending it. And this goes for your entire hand as well. You definitely don't want any part of your hand super tight and super tense, which means you don't want to be playing like with a fist or with some like tight grip in your hand, because when you tighten all the other fingers in your hand, the same thing happens. All the muscles in your arm contract and now you really physically not possible to, it's not possible to relax. So instead, use the same principle that we use for your thumb for the rest of your hand. If my natural hand is just sitting there loose and relaxed like this, and I grip the pick between my thumb and index, there's no reason for the rest of my fingers to come in and squeeze. So overall, staying natural and allowing the natural shape of your hand to kind of dictate the grip that you begin with when you hold the pick is the key to playing more efficiently and more relaxed overall. It'll prevent you from cramping, from tightening, and essentially from kind of breaking your own technique down. Tip number two is cover the pick. And this is almost always the reason the pick slides around in your fingers. Think about the, those fidget spinners that kids play with. They were kind of popular a few years ago. Or think about what happens if you take a Coke bottle and you spin it on the ground. In both of those cases, the center of the fidget spinner or the center of the Coke bottle is what's making contact 
and the rest of the body of the Coke bottle is spinning around that center point. When you're holding the pick so that the point of tension between your index and thumb is directly in the center of the body of the pick, it allows the pick to actually rotate in a circle around that center point, just like the Coke bottle. So to avoid this, you need to cover the pick. You basically need to take your thumb and instead of putting it in the center of the pick, you need to put it across the entire body of the pick. Now, the pick is small. It's, it's a small surface area we're working with, so a little, a little bit will go a long way. But if you can make sure that your thumb is basically covering the entire top half of the pick, and you could do the same thing with your index finger, that will go a huge way towards stopping the pick from moving. This way, the edges of the pick have just as much pressure as the center, and that will prevent the pick from kind of rotating and pivoting around the center point like the Coke bottle does. So as long as your thumb is staying relaxed and both the thumb and index are kind of covering the top half of the pick, applying pressure evenly across the entire body of the pick, you should be able to control it much better and it should stop from moving around in your fingers. So tip number three is let it move. So even if you get your thumb and your hand relaxed and you're covering the pick on both sides, you still might find that you're not as accurate as you'd like to be. And this is because you're not letting the pick move. Wait, I thought you just told me to stop it from moving. I did. Rotational movement is bad, but that doesn't mean all movement is bad. Have you ever played a game of darts or billiards or something like this? These are games that require precision and a very fine feel in order to be accurate. So think about how you hold a dart. You don't grab it like a spear or, you know, like grip it like a baseball bat. You gently place it between your fingers so that you can release it at the exact right moment. And this is the same for pretty much any precision motion. You don't want to be gripping super hard. In order to play accurately, you have to stop the pick from rotating in a circle, but you have to allow it to move up and down between your thumb and index. Basically, when you play a downstroke, the pick has to be able to slightly move upward and the reverse is true. When you're doing an upstroke, the pick has to be able to slightly move down. You see, as the pick meets the string, pressure is applied from the pick to the string and in reverse, the string applies pressure back against the pick. And so in order for the pick to break through the string, something's got to give and it's not going to be the string. So there's basically two ways to solve this problem. You have to hold it lightly enough that the pick can move down and up, but you're still covering the pick enough that it's not gonna rotate in a circle. And you can also angle the pick so that it's not landing flat against the string, but it's coming in at a bit more of an angle. See, the pick angle allows it to actually slice through the string instead of when it's flat, having to apply constant pressure and constant pressure until it breaks through. Now, both of these, the ability to allow it to move up and down and a pick angle will create this really nice glassy tone and smooth feel as you move through the string. You won't be met with a ton of resistance and you'll be able to play way more accurately. Now, the exact degree of angle will change from person to person, how they hold the guitar, you know, a lot of different things are involved. And so you should experiment with what particular angle you want, but make sure that when you're doing that, you're not inadvertently bending your thumb to create that angle. That breaks rule number one. So you wanna make sure that the angle comes from actually how you're positioning your arm and your hand on the guitar. And once again, these are small amounts. We're dealing with small surface areas. So a little bit of angle goes a long way. You don't want like a perpendicular pick slicing through the string because you won't get any tone at all. But now all of this depends on the type of pick you use which brings me to my bonus tip. It all starts with the thickness of the pick. This is another thing the greatest players all have in common. They all use stiff and heavy picks, and there's a reason for that. Too many beginners I see just kind of grab any pick, and most of them happen to be like really sort of flexible picks. You know those kind that you can really bend. Those are very, very, I don't want to say useless, but pretty close to it. They're very difficult to be accurate with. When the pick is too light and can easily flex, it's almost impossible to predict when that pick is gonna break through the string. See, when the pick meets the string and pressure is applied, 
that pressure is transferred to the flexibility of the pick. And so if the pick can flex really easily, it's going to flex and flex. And then at some point it's going to slap through. The problem is you don't know when. And so as a result, your timing and basically every part about your picking is going to be thrown off because even down to the nanosecond, you can't really predict when that pick is going to break through. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get a thick enough pick. I always recommend at least one millimeter, uh, but I use picks up to two and a half millimeters. You basically want it stiff enough that it can't flex in between your fingers. It's got to be really rigid, really stiff and heavy. And so this is why tip number three is so important because with a stiff pick, allowing it to move up and down as you do your down and up strokes, that means that instead of the pick flexing, the pick is actually moving between your fingers and you can feel when that pick is going to break through because it's your fingers that are allowing it to move, not the flexibility of the pick. And so your timing is going to be better, your accuracy, your speed, all the parts of your picking will improve because you can actually then predict when the pick is going to come through. And then it comes down to the tip shape. And this is another thing that great players have in common is most pros, we use a pointy pick. So the pointier the pick, the more accurate you can be. The trade-off here though is that it's less forgiving because if you kind of miss, you're going to basically completely miss the string. Whereas with a more rounded point on a pick, there's more surface area, there's more material. So even if you kind of miss, you might just catch an edge of that and you'll still get a sound out of that string instead of missing completely. So my suggestion as a teacher is that as you progress and as you get better and more accurate with your picking, you transition from a rounder tip to a pointier tip. So overall, get yourself a variety of stiff, heavy picks with different tip shapes and start experimenting and finding out what works for you. And let me know in the comments what your favorite type of pick is. Mine is a Jazz 3 XL, but I'd love to hear what you use. And so to recap, you basically want to make sure to keep the hand and thumb relaxed and natural as you play. And you want to cover the pick with a thumb and index so the entire top half of the pick has pressure applied across it. And don't grip it to death. Let it sit firmly between your fingers, but still allow it to bend up and down when you apply pressure to the string. And experiment with the pick angle that's going to work best for you. And if you want to get into more detail about the actual technique of picking, go ahead and click this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay updated on new tips to help take you from beginner to advanced.